So I was saying, I figured I would go ahead and memorialize this some way, just because, you know, typhoons, you never know what to expect. You, sorry, I haven't combed my hair, and washed my face. So you're getting me very, very raw today. So yesterday I took video because uh, one time, gosh, it was October 2021, 20, we had just like a freak storm and it brought down my greenhouse and I lost a few plants that I have not been able to find still. Um, and I figured yesterday that I would go ahead and record, you know, for posterity's sake, just so that I could have memories in case that happens again. different places last night because we didn't have enough space for everyone in one spot. We have so many dogs and they don't all get along. So we have to split them up. Excuse them, Lucy. Just trying to remember the place before all this insanity happens. So this place is a hot mess, but as you can see by the pots just thrown about, but we don't have much time to secure each and every single plant. So what we did was over here, we tried to group as many plants together as we can. So yes, Kyla Renzi is here, hope it stays safe. So is UPI, UPI right here, and the Holtonianum from my last episode. And then we grouped everything around heavier pots on the outside, lighter pots on the inside. Guys on the poles, I hope you guys are actually strapped on tight. It's gonna be a wild ride by all accounts. Burly Mark's fantasy. He's just a giant, giant boy now. Oh, yeah. It's so dark. Can't really appreciate it anymore. Hi there. But yes, back to the Burly Mark's fantasy. Beautiful plant. There you go. So the leaves get darker. And 
they still so sh show some of that beautiful striation that people love the younger leaves for. If you look outside, we've got the Anthurium manilis pride over there, the blizzard, the Giganteum over there, Paraiso verde, and Sir Escaleto. Got a nice dubia back there, as well as a nice gigas. And we've got a few more plants that I am worried about. We do have a nice touch of sperma growing up this tree right here. The Giganteum, if you can see on top of his head, over there, and a few plant poles as well. I'm not even worried about the micans. I mean, that thing is just shameless. It just grows everywhere. Everywhere, like a weed. We have an Esmeral Densi narrow form, which is stuck to the pole. Um, a mint right over there. Syndaps Syndapsis mint. Um, a whole bunch of Syndapsis at the back that we're trying to train to crawl on the walls, but as you can see, there's also micans back there. So, like I said, not worried about those guys. Shameless, just shameless. Let's go check out the other greenhouse. Okay, so this greenhouse was actually cleaned up a bit before the storm. It's still a bit messy. Hi, guys. But yeah. Uh, this guy, who badly needs to be moved, needs to be repotted better. Um, just a whole bunch of everything that needs to be done. Has a bunch of inflorescences down there as well. Um, death blooms, maybe. But yeah, it's such a mess. Then we've got some touch of spermas. A, yeah. Portalancha, which is being eaten by friggin' grasshoppers caught in the act. Yo, get out of here. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I have my pinati, which I put in the ground a couple of years ago. Pinati partita. And where are you going? Where are you going? <laughs> and a few more plants. Um, that definitely need better growing conditions. The sibling of the tetrasperma that's outside on the tree that I was telling you about. Um, the cursiva. Epiprem non pinatum, which is finally doing all right, but on the inside, man, it's rough. This monstera is actually so. This monstera right here is actually part of that monstera right there. Yeah, so somewhere along the line, um, it split somewhere and just decided to go nuts on us and this syngonium has taken over my entire greenhouse and I actually want to use it as a natural shade for the coming summer months but in, you'll notice in just a little bit it's growing on the wrong side of the building the greenhouse this is my baby, my very first Monstera Albo, and this poor thing, there we go, has been consistent with these odd variegations that just take place on one side of its face, and always, always like this. Um, and then the other side is green. So green, then variegation, green, then variegation. And I need to repot this bad boy because he is actually belonging to that pot. And he is actually, so the pot is somewhere over here on this side. And yeah, bad plant mommy. Fiddle leaf fig that is doing wonderfully out here. And that I would love to put in the ground eventually. 
Um, you've seen my greenhouse before. I don't know if I've ever shown it to you this messy, but hey, typhoon's about to hit. Gotta memorialize this before um, it gets too bad. This alocasia is New Guinea gold. Um, yellows are just random. Puts out yellows whenever it feels like it. Quite wonderful. Such a happy little plant. Makes me happy too. And we have that giant wars. Look at that. Look at that stem right there. Yeah. It's curving and climbing on the other side. And it's climbing up finally. And it's just massive, boy. Massive. Massive leaves. 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 And over here, oh yeah, I think I've ever shown this guy to you guys. No, not the Spanish guitar, although it is gorgeous. Not this guy. Is that a mealy bug? I can't tell. If it is, it's a dead mealy bug. I can't tell. Perhaps. There's lizard poop, gecko poop. We don't talk about that. So this Amigium has been with us for a while. It's now putting out a new runner because it's run out of things to climb on. Right there. And, I mean, it's a gorgeous, gorgeous specimen. Instead of your typical Amigium medium, which is long and, and round, this guy isn't. And I don't know if I can fit him in the entire shot, but he's just a spectacular spectacular guy. Oh yeah. Gorgeous! And then we have another Monstera Deliciosa growing up the side. Syngonium albos. Syngonium aureas. And some more albo. Albo, albo, albo. Um, the Dendron Red Emerald. Got a um, Epipremnum Aurium Jade down there somewhere. Green Emerald, some more Red Emerald, some Lime or Neon, Neon Pothos, right? There we go. So Epipremnum, Epipremnum Aureum Neon. We have this odd Evansonii over here. Oh! Yeah, so one of the Caltheas I've only been able to keep alive because I have nothing to do with it. Some random, maybe search of sperm. I don't know. I have to look this guy up. I keep meaning to do that. We have this cool Pinatum. Yes. Check these guys out. So the more light it gets, the lighter it gets, but it's also a pale creamy yellow. Otherwise, the leaves start losing that gorgeous color unnamed as of the moment. And a what is this? This so they died. A maximum. He's big. He's giant. Really big. Really big boy. Yeah. Some of that white stuff up here are from the leaves that we use to cover our shade nets during the summer. Um, we've got leaves here in abundance, so why not? Let's see, what else do we have here? We have Tillanches and Jerry Horn. A handsome boy. Hello there. Um, Pariso Verde. Unknown Anthurium. My gorgeous husband on the other side. We've got that peacock fern with that beautiful blue iridescence. Some more tenanches. Um, I, I, oh man, I can't remember. Anyway, it's an alocasia. It goes by the common name of Green Shield. We've got a philodendron lime fiddle. Check out that. Gorgeous texture and mottling. I have a narrow one inside, which I need to also secure. But I'm out here documenting because I don't know what I should expect 
to see another Monstera. This one's a Albo, but with sports. Well, um, actually, this is the one that the Monstera Albo on the other side came from. So check out that stem. Beautifully variegated. Something I need to work on to make better. Dead fern. What's wrong? Yeah, that's old. That's the one I was telling you about. The rats build nests. Oh, our, our spent node by Penny is finally... Dead? Yeah. Is it part of the nest? Rude. Yeah. Oh gosh, where did you come from? I'm guessing it's related to the elbow. But I don't see any white variegation on the stem. So, I don't know. Probably a reverted regular common variety Monster Deliciosa with some dead bugs on it. Syngonium. Gosh, White Christmas? I can't remember. And a whole bunch of other things. We have a love. Um, enjoys all over the place and I'm gonna go out to the pools so this is the gigantame I was telling you about the blizzard a whole bunch of holes in the ground possibly rat possibly snake don't know for sure don't want to know for sure yes we have lots of snakes here they're very helpful in keeping the rat population under control but this guy <laughs> Just gave me this beautiful leaf. Seriously, look at how big he is. I can't even. Can't. And am I getting a new leaf? Yes. No, maybe. No, I got an inflorescence instead. But it's under this bamboo, which is holding up this tree, and making me very, very nervous because this tree actually fell over last typhoon we had. I just never had the time to cut it down. I'd really like to move this, but it's gigantic. Here's our dog Minnie right next to it. She's not, she's definitely Minnie right next to this Manila's Pride. So this is a hybrid of the Anthurium Luxuriens and Fausto Mirande. The Paris of Rude I was telling you about, the Escaleta I was telling you about, Pedatum, and a Glad Hands. And there's that beautiful gigas I was talking about. I guess I was telling you guys about. Really beautiful. I mean, this thing struggled. Look. Bald, 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 bald. Little itty bitty leaves. And then, bam. No. So, leaves have gotten bigger. Oh dear. Leaves have gotten bigger um, since we gave it a pull. And it seems to be stuck to the pole rather nicely. Just see those roots right there. Yes. I hope it's able to handle the 70 air for my winds. The Shangri La Pothos that does not like its pole. And here's the tree that I was telling you about that might be falling on. I'm going to side, hopefully not. Got plans for that. We have a Melanochrysum here, which was bald, 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 until we put it up on this tree. It has now rooted itself firmly to the tree, so I'm not really worried about it. Um, yeah, the Dubia. The dubia was eaten up by caterpillars. So if you look at these leaves, they're all <laughs> old. And I mean, you know, we understand our part in all of this, you know, pollinators and stuff. It's fine, but man, quite painful as well.
And then over here is the Florida. Really, really nice. Huge Florida. Oh, what a mess. Oh, Mary. Richard Flora. Mexicano. Gigantic boy. We'll see if these things survive. Over here, another butchered deliciosa. Hanging up by the caterpillars. Yeah. Like I said, doing our part and everything. And part of that is also sacrificing our plants. So, hey, golden dragon. And over here, which they really love, are the Epigram Lampinatum. So this one is, was a variegated Cebu Blue. And there's another leaf right down there. A by Penny Glaucus form, and here is the petrosperma that I was telling you about, and it has climbed all the way up, all the way up, all the way up. So this, gosh, I stand five foot five, and this is maybe double. Yeah, this is over double my height. I've got some huge leaves up there too. It's a shame. I hope that guy is hanging on tight. I'd hate to see him broken. Another giant gigantium. Literally. Grantianum finis. Um, right next to it is a Monstera radicans, which I understand is a gunati. Um, tripartitum. Another tripartitum. Out of this side, this one hurts my soul. This guy right here. Queens have not been kind to it. And I know I need to take it off before the summer comes because it is gonna get brutalized and I'm getting this weed out fresh anymore. But yeah, it is hanging on for dear life really, really well. You can tell. The good thing about this is that it is no longer rooted in its butt. So it is rooted within the pole. Even if this pole falls, it'll be fine. Except if it falls forward, then it won't be fine. I'll be sad. Um, a Epigram Lumpinato Mint. Have a closer look at the unhardened leaf. Here's a hardened leaf, so this is the Philippine version. <sighs> and I say Philippine version because there have been others known. A Skindapsis officinalis, which is just shameful. This thing's just shameful. Um, the Pipro Nopinatum. It is a Glaucus form, but it is not the silver one. Um, yeah, I wish these leaves didn't get broken. Here we've got a Happy Bramnum Thai um, marble. And man, it's up there in there tight. Please don't break. I'd hate to have footage memorializing when I broke this. Please don't break, please don't break, please don't break. Oh yeah, there we go. Just a little bit more. Just the tip. Come on now. Oh shoot. It's not gonna come out. It's in there tight. Come on. Come on. Come on. Almost there. Oh yes. And she did it. And it's gonna be hideous. But they'll survive. So this is a Epipremnum Pinatum marble. 
It's the, t the marble from Thailand. And this guy has been alternating leaves. Um, starting with this. So, a little bit of dark green. Reverting. Not reverting. Reverting. Not reverting. Reverting. Not reverting. So this one is probably going to be a reverted leaf based on its pattern. Hopefully the next leaf comes out. We'll make it look like this. And this is our perfect little specimen. Which is just gorgeous. And I hope it continues that way. And this is my Epipremnum Binatomoraria. Yeah. Which the caterpillars had lots of fun with as well. But here's its newest leaf. And we got fenestration, folks. Fenestrations. But yeah, they really love Epipremnum Binatomes here. And my point exactly. So this was a gorgeous, gorgeous skeleton key. So most skeleton keys, you know, you know the shape, right? Looks like a key. Looks like a skeleton key. Except this guy is already at this shape. Oh yeah, with like a, a manta ray, right? And that is its newest leaf. But each and every single leaf before that had been eaten off. Because I guess binatums are delicious if you're a caterpillar. And here's another strand um, of the same plant, just not as mature as the one that I showed you. You know, with that cute little tail. Yeah. Yeah, definitely a cute little tail. Itty bitty. And then this is my. Epipremnum binatum elbow, which also lost all of its leaves. And then, not only that, decided to go full elbow on me. Little specks here and there. Yeah, problem. Definitely problem. Mini? Mini, no. Oh my gosh. I see just a little bit of green. So yeah, I worry. Excuse me, Mini. We don't eat the plants. And then got a few more here. A few guys here who are nicely rooted. I'm sure they're gonna do fine. Um, little tortum right down there. Ayoyai. Diafimbakia. Really pa beautiful patterns. If you guys aren't from the Philippines, there was a lady who actually went viral recently for getting diafimbakia sap sprayed in her eye and on her face. And instinctively, she licked it. The sap that ended up on her mouth. So, yeah, that was not a good thing. Don't lick diafimbakia sap. Interesting. Look at that guy. Just gorgeous. And I think he's going outside the fence. So I'll have to take care of that when everything is done. And mini again. And the gorgeous husband. And that is it for now. Um, have this guy that I worried about. Yeah, put the other plants down over there. Put everything off of the top of the bar. Someone cleaned the bar, even though I told him not to, because, oh, oh, not guilty at all. <laughs> even though I told him not to, because the random one will clean it for him. And then we have our little water feature that we never completely finished, that I still need to replant, full of colocations and <sighs> surface from a Johnstone eye. Just a whole bunch of stuff. Pothos right there. Not the guy, the plant. That's a Bernardo Patsii. That guy, the big one. Yes. Over there. He's huge. Huge, huge mungus. Um, uh, 
like the amedrium that I was telling you guys about. Chubby, cute, heart shaped, not like the guy that I showed you earlier in my greenhouse. <sighs> we might lose this leaf. Is it firmly stuck yet? Oh, it is. Okay. It is. And then there's termite damage on our pole already. Yeah. There they are. Jerks. Okay. And that is it for me. That is it for me. Hello, termites. I'll see you guys tomorrow after this all ends. Bye for now. places last night because we didn't have enough space for everyone in one spot. We have so many dogs and they don't all get along. So we have to split them up. <coughs> Excuse them, Lucy. And this is where I passed through yesterday. And I took video of Our video going to the back. And there's the troublemaker that doesn't get along with everybody. He's cute, but definitely red flag that one. So, yeah. A lot of banana trees lost to the storm, to Cardin. Putting this on pause. Actually, no. This, this is pretty devastating in its own way. Um, we didn't lose any structures, thankfully. We didn't lose any lives, um, all of our animals. You know what? No, I take that back. I haven't checked the cows. I don't know if anyone's checked the cows, but all of the animals so far are well and um, in good shape. <sighs> the plants, not so much. Here. Oh yeah. There goes a trellis. And past that trellis right there. Used to be my mother-in-law's greenhouse, herb greenhouse. And there's another broken trellis. So we're missing a lot of trellises. Just a lot. We did lose some trees. 
Um, some trees were actually pulled out of the ground, snapped at the base. This, this caballero I think we're actually going to be able to save. It looks like it was just uprooted a little bit. But yeah, so mother-in-law's coleus plants. Rough, just really rough. Um, the cool boy's still standing miraculously. And miraculously, because I'll show you in a little bit um, the damage, including what happened here. So, the trellis in the front. Yeah. Um, the table and chair set. Wow, still there. Playground still there. That does not belong. That is um, the trampoline. And hi, Lex. Oh, crazy dogs. I love them. I love how happy they are that everything's all right. I have no idea what was in that large garbage can. So this area was really shady yesterday. Really shady. Um, this is where we keep a lot of our plants that we want to keep an eye on, the potting shed. And I don't see the pedatum standing up, meaning it's probably fallen on someone, and I hope that someone isn't broken. These guys are fine. More water, happier plants. These guys seem okay. Bernardo Patiae. I took a video of yesterday. And seems to be very much alive. So, okay. We are good. Put this up for now. We can move that later. The pothos. And it really is a pothos. This is not an epipenum. Aureum. Or pinatum for that matter. Seems to be doing well. Tip is still alive. So Paolo's poles, <laughs> as I like to call them, all three are still standing over here beside the potting shed. And let's see who fell. Sure enough, it's the pedatum. I don't have the keys, can't go in. So the pedatum fell on the cursi. Oh no. The pedatum fell. Oh no. Who did he fall on? The crucifolium fell. Sorry, I know you can't see it. See if I get, there we go. So the pedatum fell down. Big boy right there. Who did you fall on? Can't remember who's there. Oh. Okay, so those were my propagations. And the crucifolium tipped over a little bit. But for the most part, everybody else looks okay. Dang, those are my propagations. We had to leave some plants out last night. Um, yeah, you can see the branch right here broke off, but for the most part these guys look well, yeah, they look great, sturdy, whatever the spine is that kept this Hoya from moving around too much, really sturdy, the surprise variegated um, ZZ plant, so much alive. The guys I put down yesterday, so much alive. Some more broken trellis in the background. Mother-in-law's succulent garden seems to, cactus garden seems to be okay. Uh, the plants underneath the mango tree seem to be fine. Let's go check out the other poles. So, the diaphanbaca here. Look. Okay, there is a lot of tree down here, so. These guys are still alive and well. It's good. Oof. I'm not even going to show this to you yet. I can't. Okay. These guys are alive and well. These guys are alive and well. Oh no. Okay. This guy does not seem to be alive and well. It looks like we lost Okay, a couple. And I think this is the Ernestii. Such a nice plant. 
but we got some growth, so that'll be fine. Um, this is the plant I was worried about yesterday, and it looks like all of these are broken. Yeah, all of these are broken. This is that special I put on Pinatum from Pinoy Plantito. And I can't tell if the top has broken off as well. Let's go see. Um, I have just the tip. It's fine. It's fine. It'll grow back. And we got nodes. Tons of nodes. So hopefully it'll grow back well. Um, Tripartitum's fine. Brandianum. The finis is fine. Um, I'll show the Zika is alive and well. Radicans is fine. So, yesterday I was telling you guys that I'm really worried about my tetrasperma, Phytophora tetrasperma, and my giganteum. And there's the giganteum. And I don't know if you can see it, but tetrasperma sends its regards. So it is doing fine as well. Oh yeah. Can't believe that thing survived. Really can't. So all those poles eight all are still standing upright. Yeah, a lot of broken branches. Still very fresh. Um these guys seem fine. Hanging on tight. Here we have a golden dragon and a monstera, and both look like they're still upright. Reverted monstera, delicious aurea, by Penny from yesterday, still upright. What the heck? Um, glad hands and a pedatum, still upright. Ooh, what is that pot? What is that pot? Okay, um, let me not get ahead of myself. I want to be really methodical here. So we got... Oh, here we go. We got one down pole. One down pole. We have a giant Mexicanum. You guys saw that yesterday. The Rifidophora elmeri. And a Philodendron Florida there. They're all still in pots. So hopefully they're still rooted there. I am worried about the stem of the Mexicanum. Hopefully it's okay. Um, it's not broken anywhere. Can't see it very well. Maybe you guys can help show me. We do also have a Rifidophora here that I don't know where it came from. There it is. Okay. So it's pot is still well. So one pull down, we just need to stand it upright. We didn't lose this tree, thankfully. Bamboo trees over here on the other side of the fence are the ones that caused some damage here. Um, we have a dubia here, which from the looks of it is still upright and hanging on for dear life. I don't see the melanochrysum. Um, Let's go see if we can sneak in just a little bit. Wow, check this bamboo out. What the heck? I don't want to know. So this fence, you can't see it, but looks like something hit it. The high velocity. You can see that bulge coming out. Yeah, something hit it hard. And I can't get there. Yeah, okay. So the Melanochrysum is right there. Still upright. Pot is still there as well. There's the dubia pot and the pricing pot. Oh shoot. Oh god. Okay that one hurts. We did lose a pole. It is down and it got hit by the bamboo. This was the guy guess from yesterday. The one that I told you guys was doing so well. Well I see a pot and it looks empty. I see another pot, and it's probably empty too. There's a third pot, and I can't see anything. 
So we'll have to come back here later and see if I could retrieve what's left of that plant. So that's a really nice plant. Okay, so the empty pot, no idea where it came from, but the escalata looks like it's still there, as does the um, Paraíso Verde pots. Oh no. If you look further, you see a Manila's pride leaf on the ground, and let me get out of here and we'll check those out. So yesterday I mentioned that we had a fallen tree that we never took care of, and my mind could be playing tricks on me, but this thing looks a lot closer than it used to be. In fact, it's literally right next to the fallen pole, so I don't know what's going on. We'll have to look at that. Manila's Pride is still as gorgeous as ever. And you know what Jackie Chan said in Rush Hour about bamboo? Oh yeah. This stuff is amazing. And amazingly strong at that. Holding up that pole above Manila's Pride, who is not looking too bad considering everything she's been through. And the blizzard right next to it. Fantastic. Showing off a new leaf that has yet to harden, but variegated still. Let's check out the greenhouses. So, I don't want to go inside the greenhouse right now because the dogs are with me and <sighs> our water feature. So we have a little water garden that I haven't shown you guys because we're working on it and it is just water and a mess. I'll show you guys right now actually. Got some benches there. What in the world? A fallen tree. Fantastic. So got some benches. We were planning on turning this into a water garden, you know, something where the bamboo could just provide some shade. For people who want to rest. But yeah, falling tree, fantastic. Anyway, getting back to what I was gonna say, I'm not gonna go inside the greenhouses because for the most part we can see them out here and I don't want the dogs trampling over everything before I actually have a closer look. But yeah, everybody looks fantastic except for my variegated alocasia and Need to have a closer look. See if that guy is gonna be okay. Yeah, look at all these leaves. Lots of wind. That made stickers. I mean, I do have spare allocations, but I'd hate to have to replace the guy because he's so gorgeous. And I don't think I'll have to. I just need to stand him upright and provide him some support, I think. Yeah, so this is what brought the trellis down. Giant, giant papaya tree, and it brought everything down like dominoes. So, flatland in the middle. The animal housing is still upright and has it flown away. Um, yeah, everything is good. Oh, okay, except for my mother-in-law's water fountain. All the way over there. And looks like we're missing some trees too, big night trees. Um, tart berries, kind of reminds me of cranberries uh, for our Westerner friends. And I've got this locked, so I'm not going to go in either. Oh no, oh no, 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 no. Uh, okay, lost a major pole. This is an Adansonii that we've been trying to get identified and figured out. I'm sure you saw it in my before video and hopefully it's not a goner. Hopefully we can still recover it. I mean, this plant is pretty hardy. You can see it right, 
right there. Right there. Right there. Okay, I'll circle it. The Monsteras look good. Everybody else looks great. The Monstera at the end looks good. Um, so let's kind of have a look to see around here. <sighs> yeah, so painful. But anyway, there's that Edisonia leaf I was telling you about right there. Yeah, so we've got a spare, but it was growing so wonderfully. Um, kind of like a Monstera Pinati Partita, where the leaves were actually fanning out against the pole. Speaking of the Pinati, looking good right here. There's the Monstera Albo that I need to repot, that I've been promising that I'll repot someday. Some more of the damage here. Oof. This place is bald. Yeah. There's the monster album I was telling you about. The one with a really peculiar variation just in that quadrant for all of its leaves. Anyway. Um, so it looks like everybody in the greenhouses did great. And it looks like we've got some work to do here in the back. Just, I guess, new things, new ideas to put into or into reality, right? Man, this is a dang, excuse my language, shame. But let me go ahead and get to the front of the house and show you what I'm talking about in terms of luck. Because... Yeah, let me show you instead. So this is the front of the house. It is quite bald. Um, not a bad thing to let some light in, but man. So the bougainvilleas all fell over again. And I think this is going to be an easy solution, just a simple um, lifting them up and stabilizing them. But until then, no cars are going to be going in and out. Ow. Send them. <laughs> so despite the Pungenvillia falling over and taking over the road, the Rambutans are doing great. You know, I consider myself one of the lucky ones. Our family is lucky. We are safe. Not too much damage to the property or any of the structures. There is, you know, some damage here and there, but nothing that we can't manage. Um, some of our countrymen are not doing as well. In fact, um, one of the guys who works on the farm, um, he owns his own farm as well, so he just comes out here to help. Um, he lost his rice fields. They just needed to, they just needed to, I guess, cut it down and, and harvest it, but gardening got to it first, so, of course, my rice is laying down, so I think that's the only, only patty that's doing that, but this, this is what I'm talking about. So this is a... 30 year old tree, 30 year old mango tree, maybe 40 year old mango tree, and Garding just snapped this thing like it's nobody's business. So this tree, yeah, totally snapped. Check that out. Like nothing. You know, broke off another branch right there as it split it in half. So, like I said, we didn't lose any life, any lives. We didn't lose any major plants aside from this guy. I mean, um, we are a mango, we a mango orchard, so we do have mangoes for sale. And you know, while it's 
a little sad and it's definitely a lot of work we don't have we have a lot to be grateful for and I am hoping that our countrymen um, who've been affected badly by Carding are just as lucky to get away with this as we are in fact praying for it so that's it for today um, Tasteful Notes Tuesday will continue tomorrow as it's been uploaded and um, yeah, happier memories there um, from the people from Kaisan. So, so what do you think guys? Until next time, see ya.